Are you serious? Great coffee, great coffee this morning. The sun is boiling. That's right. We have reports from spaceweather.com. The sun is boiling. The disk of the sun may look serene as it appears high in the noontime sky, but don't be fooled, folks. Our star is in a constant state of wreathing motion. To illustrate this truth, back on April the 29th, amateur astronomer Pasquale Pacarero of France video recorded a patch of the solar terrain around the quiet sunspot AR2653. It is unbelievable what he captured. He used a 10-inch Skywatcher telescope capped with an astral solar bader filter to capture 15 minutes of animation that was appearing on the sun. What he discovered, his high-resolution images showed that astronomers have been long, have been concerned of. The sun is so hot, it literally boils. Now, bumps on the boiling surface of the sun are called granulars, and you can find these granulars in your kitchen in a pot of hot boiling water on a stove. Here's the difference. While the granulars on your stove are only a few centimeters across, these granulars on the sun are as wide as Texas. What? The sun is boiling. Now, one thing about this, what we're discovering is that the sun has a, becoming extremely volatile, extremely explosive, releasing uh, plasma gases and eruptions and uh, coronal mass ejections and solar flares of a biblical proportion. And the Bible said there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts would fail them for fear for looking after those things coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall we see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head, for your redemption is drawing nigh. But the apocalyptic events leading up to the coming of the Lord are going to get extremely concerning. Now, as you know, August 21st, there's going to be a total solar eclipse of the sun. And for the first time in the history of this republic since 1776, this total darkness, this 70 mile wide band of a total eclipse of the sun will go from Oregon to South Carolina. This is going to be an incredible event happening on the 21st of August. I'll be watching it. It, is, it's, it will also be my wife and I, Heidi, it'll be our 35th wedding anniversary and we will be sharing it with you if you come to the Hear the Watchman conference in Boise, Idaho, in that conference, it will be powerful. they got great speakers coming from all over. Anthony Patch will be there. Russ Dizdar, L.A. Marzulli. Are you serious? And a whole lot more. And on the day of the eclipse, we're actually going to take a bus to the Continental Divide there in Idaho, and we're going to stand there high in a perfectly clear afternoon with special goggles everyone can have if you come to the conference and we will watch this incredible event in the heavens and you say well pastor that's really cool but what's it going to do with bible prophecy everything 33 days later there's going to be the great wonder in the heavens on september 23rd that's when the woman clothed in the sun with the with the moon at her feet and jupiter being birth and a crown out of the constellation of Leo with 12 stars instead of nine because the three wandering stars, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, will come into the crown. Uh, and then they will be in a perfect alignment. Mercury, Mars, Venus in the crown. The sun will be in her clothing. Jupiter will be in birth. And the moon's at her feet in a complete perfect alignment. This is never, ever in the history of the world. NASA says never has it happened before in humanity. 
nor will it ever happen again. They've run computerized models of all of the uh, rotations of the of the planets and the solar system, everything. It doesn't ever, they run the computer on into infinity and it never happens again. But it's going to happen on this September 23rd, 33 days after this solar eclipse. And it just so happens to be the Feast of Trumpets. What? Blow the trumpet in Zion. The king is coming, folks. And then seven days later is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Now, this is all part of the great wonder in heaven. And then, of course, it's not just the great wonder in heaven about the woman giving birth to the man-child, but also and another wonder, and that is the rise of the, of the red dragon, the beast. It's described just very similar to the beast in Revelation 13, the very next chapter, the rise of the new world order, the Antichrist. So we're getting a double sign. In that sign on the 23rd, you're not only going to see about the unbelievable birthing of the man-child, the great wonder in heaven, but also another sign of the birthing of the beast, the realization, the revelation. And if you go to, if you go to Leviticus chapter 12, you'll read that, well, God spoke about when the woman gets ready to give birth to a man-child, it has to be a male, can't be a female, it even says it, that then there is 33 days of purification, followed by seven more days before complete atonement. Are you serious? It's, it, it's just incredible. So with this solar eclipse and this great wonder in the heavens, so August 21st and September 23rd are tied together. These are the signs in the heavens of the apocalyptic end time conclusion. We are at the coming apocalypse, the coming revelation, the coming unveiling, the coming revealing of the coming of Jesus Christ. Are you saved? Yeah, the sun is boiling all right. Someday the earth will too. Are you saved? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Oh, we're running out of time. Oh, we're definitely running out of time. 